Hey guys, welcome to Bid Nerd, your daily nerd out of the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. I'm here with my partner, Michael Deeb, who is in cold, cold San Francisco, but apparently it's warming up. He's not wearing a puffy jacket. Uh, my name is John Polnick. Uh, I'm recording this show from the Container Park in downtown Las Vegas. If you're ever in downtown Las Vegas and you're, you see a big flame-throwing praying mantis, uh, <laughs> you are in the right place. Come on inside yeah. the park and yeah. uh, find us. We're up here in the Rami studio. Uh, record this show a couple times a week uh so we'd love to meet you um all right what do we do on this channel what's that when you when you say big huge flamethrowing praying mantis i don't think people appreciate what you mean this is like 18 feet tall it's huge well they've all seen it if they're watching the show they just saw it It was in the opening segment that big flamethrowing thing that's our building that's where we're at it's literally the size of a school bus he's deep is absolutely right it is not a small little thingy yeah. Uh, okay, what do we do on this channel? We find the most interesting car from P Car Market, Cars and Bids, Bring a Trailer, Mark, Shiftgate, all the other auction sites. We find the most interesting one. Uh, we have a conversation about the market and that specific car where it lives in that space. We make a prediction as to what we think is going to happen with that car's auction, how much it'll sell for or not. Oftentimes, failures to sell uh, is a thing that happens. Uh, we have that conversation. More and more. We ma- or more and more these days. Yeah, it's unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so we want you to play along when we make the bid uh, you can go ahead and play along and put your bid in the comments below uh, but uh, hit the subscribe like and notification button if you haven't done it already uh, you guys that are watching I know there's like at least four or five of you we really really do appreciate you guys being fans of thank the show you. Uh, thank you very very much uh, we appreciate you spreading the word um, we know a lot of people are watching that aren't subscribing so let's see some more subscriptions let's get this uh let's get this channel rolling let people know about it uh you know and uh let us know if there's a car coming up in the coming up in the future that you'd like us uh to do a profile on if you think there's something that's really interesting uh we want to hear about it and maybe we'll talk about that car on a future episode but right now uh we're going to go in the future at the in the middle of this show once we get to our bids we'll go uh into the future and we'll see how much the car actually sold for or didn't uh so that's kind of what we do all right well let's get to the cars today's car is a very interesting car um always love these love driving i've never owned one but uh what a rad car i think this car fits is is still lives in rad territory even though it's technically not uh radwood what do we got here michael deep i've got to tell you jp i don't think you know but in 2004 i worked for sonnen uh volkswagen audi i sold these cars brand new i sold like oh, two wow. of these things uh, to some customers and they loved them. I, I loved one. I wanted to buy one when I worked there. Um, but uh, I, I was making like, commercials for these things. I remember driving yeah. these around, uh, making yeah. commercials and, and just going, "Oh my god!" And here's another one. The year before, I was on Knob Hill. You've been to the restaurant before. I was on Knob Hill, and these uh, Audi TT and uh-huh. Volkswagen R32 uh, test car, all in matte black wrap. Um, with a bunch of German scientists with a bunch of laptops plugged into the car came screaming by uh, Taylor Street and then when I got in my car to leave I drove down two blocks and they were all pulled over to the side of the road and so I stopped to ask them about the car and they had R32 with a DCD and when I showed him in the car he offered me a test drive so I actually drove one of these in oh, like wow. 2002 2003 uh, before they had hit the market he said do you think we should sell dual clutch transmission and I said, absolutely. I said, the guy that wants the high performance uh, GTI essentially love uh, a car with all the latest technology. And of course, they wound up for him, Bo Gearbox. So, our car AP is a 2004 Volkswagen R32 offered out of Camden, New Jersey on Cars and Bids, Doug DeMiro's site. Uh, with just 54,000 miles, it looked to be in pretty nice condition. As you slow down on some of those photos, there are a couple of cosmetic scratches on the car. It's not perfect. But R32s that have not been modified or beat to hell with 100,000 miles or a coilover have brought collector car money. These cars were essentially, JP, $30,000 brand new. And we've seen R32s bring fifty dollars and $60,000 with low miles and no modifications. So here is a nice, original, clean R32 on the East Coast um, in a weird time to be selling the car this guy would have got you know i'd say 30 percent more money if he sold it uh three four months ago um i feel like he's a little late to the dance and these aren't blue chip collectible cars 
um, even though we've seen the Volkswagen and maybe other collector car community pay premiums for these cars, I think he might have missed the boat. This guy might jump off the pier and land in the water. So um, anyway, really nice car. Uh, cool. Um, it's got some cone shock absorbers. It's not coilover, but it just changed the cone shocks. Uh, you've got the 18-inch Aristo wheel. Uh, JP, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but are they Koenig seats? Those big, heavily bolstered leather seats that came stock from the factory. Uh, All-wheel drive, normally aspirated 240 horsepower motor. I mean, this is almost E36 M3 spec, but it's a little heavier. Uh, these cars are just fun to drive. Do you remember the tuned exhaust on these? The gurgle on overrun. Um, love the car. I think they're really cool. Um, I don't know that I would pay 40 or 50 grand for one, but here is a nice one that's going to bring, you know, some should bring some serious money. Uh, what do you have? What do you think? You keep saying it's a nice, clean one, and this is anything but this thing's a hunk of crap. Are you looking okay. at the, are you, Can you why. see these no, photos? I, I mean, oh, I, the I know you're looking at this. It is a rust bucket. I mean, the last oh. place in the world you want to buy a car from is New Jersey. We always talk about how bad um, we always talk about how oh. bad like Florida is. But the thing is, Thank at least Florida is warm, me. right? You know, Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it may be you know hot and salty and stuff like that, and it causes cars to get musty and rusty. Uh, but in New Jersey, not only is it cold and salty, you know, they salt the daylights out of the roads. They they don't keep the roads up. They're, they they have potholes. You know, I, I, I'm i from New Jersey. Not many people know. I, I was actually born there. I, I, I spent no time there other than the summers. I would sometimes go and visit my cousins. Um, and the thing is, I remember, you know, being a car enthusiast as a kid and going back east, particularly to New Jersey. And, you know, my cousins would always have kind of like these late model cars when we all got uh, yeah. the, you know, they, I was the youngest of all the cousins. So... You know, I watched for years as my cousins got their first cars. You know, I'm like, man, how do they, they got a five year old car, four year old car? You know, that's a big deal for yeah. a 16 year old, right? You know, of how do course. you get it, get in a contemporary GTI or a contemporary whatever? Um, but then you'd go visit them and you'd see the cars and they're just like pieces of crap because cars yeah. do not last in New Jersey. They just yeah. deteriorate. They get destroyed. If you daily drive a car, this. yeah, anywhere in the Northeast, it's just, they're just, you're just going to just, it's, they can't handle it. Uh, unless you're, yeah. you know, just you drive it in the summertime or something like that. Um, so this car definitely fits in that category. This is a, I, I mean, I wouldn't touch this car. This car is worthless. Um, this is something. I would, I, yeah, I was wondering, GP. I was going to ask you. I was like, shockingly, our car is only at ten thousand dollars on sixteen bids with a day to go. This car essentially closed tomorrow, John. And I was wondering why the price was so low. But yeah. uh, I kind of rushed to do my prep for the thing, so I did not go through the photos and and see all the undercarriage shots that you showed us. Um, which uh, obviously shows the evidence of all the wear and tear that this car's been through you know, on the East Coast for some time. So, You're absolutely right that they're great cars, though. I mean, as far yeah. as uh, when they work, you know, and, and Mark IVs are problematic with gremlins. Uh, lots of gizmos yeah. go wrong. Lots of check engine lights. I mean, that's it's kind of a it's kind of a running joke with Volkswagen fans. Oh, Mark IV check engine light. Those are you know, the sky's blue, water's wet. Check engine lights on on your Mark IV. Uh, so getting these <laughs> things to getting these things to smog is next to impossible. There's all kinds of like little stuff like that that will get you in trouble. Um, but when they are, when they're good, when they're maintained, and when they're in an, from an environment yeah. that doesn't destroy them, they are absolutely just really, really, really capable, fun cars to drive. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a reserve auction, so I'm curious to see where Doug DeVero's team has placed the reserve for this uh, seller. Um, initially, I thought, you know, based on the miles and being sort of not modified. Assuming the condition was nice, I thought this could be close to a thirty thousand dollar exam. But given the underside, given where the bid is at right now, um, I think the car is going to struggle. So I'm going to take ten grand off my bid, JP, and send it to you at eighteen thousand dollars. Where are you at on this one that I know I wouldn't buy for any price? Yeah, I'm shocked that it's even at ten. I mean, I can't believe there's even bids on this thing. I mean, maybe yeah. you pull the powertrain out of this thing, or maybe you drive it till it blows up. I don't know. Uh, cheap, cheap, cool car, and you hope it doesn't crack in half because um, of all the rust <laughs> in, in the darn thing. Yeah. Uh, 
13. You know, I mean, I think you could get a few wow. more bids and then it'll just sit there. Um, you know, yeah. that's the problem with cars and bids. It just doesn't have the traffic as uh, bring a trailer. Um, and, you know, because on bearing a trailer, this car is the kind of car that someone would be like, oh, this would be a great race car. Oh, this would be good something yeah. to, you know, do something with. But uh, cars yeah. and bids Maybe just doesn't have it. Yeah, right. I mean, but I, I think he's smarter than that. It? I think I yeah. think uh, I think Mental uh, isn't. Yeah, I think uh, if he's going to buy a terrible, terrible uh, piece of crap car, uh, it's going to be a Porsche. Uh, all right, guys. GP, what do before, you guys think? Well, yeah. We, before we jump ahead, when you look at the condition of the car, where do you think? Like, when you give me thirteen and I give you eighteen, do you think it sells at that price? Do you think, like, cars and bids? team must be aware of the condition of the car so where do you i don't i don't know like how the cars and bids team didn't just go uh, nah, pass yeah we're not gonna let this go i mean this we've had the, this used to be one of the most common conversations we like why would you let someone put on a crappy car um right. you know when when you're trying to sell expensive cars i mean if your gt3 is the next car in the lot uh or yeah. on you know on the on the block you don't want your car coming in after this. This is this is terrible. Um, this is bad for the platform. And I think if uh, if Doug Demiro's team sees this car come in with all that rust and stuff like that, they're gonna be like, yeah, okay, fine, we'll sell it because it is still an R32, which makes it special, and it is an enthusiast car. Right. It does fit the qualifications, but the amount of rust on this thing means we'll we'll sell it, but it has to be no reserve. It's the yeah. only way we'll let it go. Um, did, well, didn't we see a oh. Volvo, like a little 240 kind of enthusiast Volvo a couple of weeks ago that was kind of beat up too? And But I yep. don't remember yep. there being a reserve on that one. So it was like, okay, no. you yep. know, that makes sense. All right, here's yeah. potentially a steal. That makes sense. But to put a reserve on this, um, I wouldn't set the reserve more than six grand for this thing. Uh, <laughs> so maybe it's already beat the reserve. Maybe it's fine. I mean, I'm not yeah. even kidding. I mean, this no, is... No, I know, I know. You know? I, I think, and I think your take is good. For a car like this, it should be no reserve. I, even I think the tires look take. bad. I mean, it's like, yeah. geez, what a piece of junk. What do you guys think? Put your uh, put your bid in now. Uh, now is the time, and we are going to go to the future and find out what happens with this auction. See you on the other side. Hey, guys, I'm super excited to tell you about our sponsor, Guys Customs. That's Guys, G-Y-X, underscore customs that's how you spell it guys customs bracelets these things are amazing check them out they're handmade in america custom bracelets made to match your watch or your car these things are unbelievable i have three or four of them myself my partner michael deeb has a bunch of them uh they're pretty addictive once you get one each one of them are bespoke we're talking uh we're talking carbon fiber we're talking titanium we're talking stainless steel glass. There's none of this cheap Chinese garbage that you see a lot of bracelets being made out there. These ones are super high quality. They're made right here in America. When you go to Guys Customs on Instagram, it's about the only place that you can order one of these. Uh, when you DM the artist, you're actually reaching the real artist when you DM Guys Customs at Instagram. Uh, and she will make you a bracelet made to match that special watch, that special car, or that special person that has a special watch or a special car, and they want something really, really cool uh, in their life. These are the, they make the most amazing gifts. Um, I get compliments on mine all the time. Everywhere I go, people are like, wow, that's really cool. You can see in the pictures, uh, you know, these beads, the, the colored beads, are PTS, they're paint to sample. So if you have a specific color code for your car, she'll have beads made that are specifically painted to match your car or your watch. It's unbelievable. You gotta get one of these guys, customs, bracelets. Check them out, they support us, uh, and we really, really, really wanna support them. Guys, customs, bracelets. All right, let's get back to the bids. Let's find out how much that car sold for today. Hey everybody, welcome back to Bid Nerds, your daily nerd on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. Look at this, celebrity alert, we've got someone I'm pointing the wrong way, I gotta look at the screen, I don't know what I'm doing, there it is. Lane Skelton from DWA is joining us in the future, how are you Lane? I'm doing great. You sound like micro machines, dude. I gotta get to it. So I gotta fast, get to it. So Nobody That's wants good. to hear me repeat that stupid uh, stuff, they just want to get right to the show. They're, you're here, so we gotta get to you, right? I know, I know. Yeah, yeah and you kind of take it as the opposite. You're like, yeah, man, I know. I'm chill, dude. I'm just <laughs> crazy. 
Lane's in Santa Cruz. Everything's slow down there. Yeah, this yeah. is female. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas. Well, hey, folks, if you're watching the show, you just came out of the commercial break and you're wondering about this uh, really interesting R32 Volkswagen. We're own pimping the auto. Uh, Dee, why don't you give us a quick rundown on what this car was just so Lane can get refreshed and uh, right. maybe uh, give us a bid. What does he think this car is going to sell for? Did you put your bid in yet? By the way, if you're watching the show, you haven't put your bid in yet. Now's the time. Yeah. You still got a minute. Uh, we'll see if you're any right. good at this. All right, what do we got? All right, on Cars and Bids, Doug Miro's site, we looked at the 2004 R32 with just 54,000 miles offered to us out of Camden, Jersey. The thing is, R32s bring ridiculous money, especially with low miles. Like, you know, 54,000 miles is actually really low miles for one of these cars because so many of them have been driven. But upon closer inspection, this car's pretty rough. There's rust, all sorts of crap going on underneath this car that would make you shy away from investing any sort of real money in it. So on cars and bids, even though low miles, but kind of a rough condition R32, Lane, I send to you this oh. soup sandwich. What do you make of it? Wow, dude, I, I, I always like these things. They're really cool. I think they're muscular looking. This gen looks good, Mark Force. Yeah. Um, or, uh, or, yeah, Mark Force. But this was tattered. I, I, <laughs> and I had looked at these in the market since like 12 years ago, and they were yeah. always like 20,000 bucks. Like they held their value pretty well. Um, so maybe I'll say this one is 20 grand just because it is a nice one with this miles would probably be way more than that. So I'm going right. to say 20, 20, even though I would never buy this car, not in a million years. Like $20,000 from Lane Skelton and a quick glance. Um, I think my, my, my job is in jeopardy. Um, Lane, you would have won this one for sure. Uh, AP was really, should I say bearish on this? He said 13,000 bucks. I was still a tad more optimistic just because nice r32s are bringing well over their original sticker price We're seeing nice 32 in the 40 to 50 sometimes higher range so i said eighteen thousand dollars Lane came in at twenty thousand dollars and our car sold for nineteen thousand three hundred dollars lane beat me by 300 bucks uh jp you'll be shocked to know that this was our second highest total of bids 47 bids on doug demiro's wow. site for this for this soup sandwich so what do you think of that result, Lane? God, and congratulations. Uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, dude. I have a really shitty R30, R32 R yeah, <laughs> R now. Yeah. Um, could you imagine spending 20K on this thing? Oh, my uh, God. Yeah. I don't, Bad idea. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to think. I mean, I understand it because I, I was thinking like nice ones are 40, 45 or whatever. Sure, so, it's true. Yeah. Um, the miles, I guess, people are all about mile, miles. It looks like the rear fender is a different color than the door on that one side and just all that rust i'm i'm yeah i don't know i i can't you can't i can never be in the mindset to think i would i would never even look past like the one picture of rust i'd be out yeah so yeah i don't know i'm not the guy i'm not the these these are not the droids you're looking for yeah when you're looking at old cars sometimes things like patina can be attractive if you have some surface rust on an old 911 that's pretty awesome but the rust on this car it looks like cancer i mean this is some malignant crap i mean it is not looking like i mean you know we're not talking patina rust we're talking uh actual structural problems that are not going to get better uh they're only going to get worse i mean new jersey is one of the worst places in the world for cars um and this thing is just a pile of junk i can't um, i can only imagine what all the fittings and you know bushings underneath are like i mean if you've got surface rust on the body uh, how bad is it on the areas where you can't see? I mean, look at this. This is this isn't even a five thousand dollar car to me. I wouldn't pay anything for this car. It's yeah, not even worth JP, parts. This, this is crazy to me because I can't remember since we've been doing the show that we looked at a car that was built in this century that is rusting through. It's coming yeah. through the body and the paint um, in real time. That's just that's bonkers to me. You know, so, that's the northeast for you. I mean, look, wow. uh, gosh, you can't. 
Oh man, I'm sorry guys. This car, this car just gets me a little angry because I really do like these. Um, you know, this is a, how I, great is I this car a, on the Coastal Range Rally, Lane? Oh, it's perfect. It's so all-wheel drive. V, you know, VR6. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's very comfortable, good conditioning. It's great all-rounder. Very predictable handling. Perfect for roads you've never driven before. Yeah, it's a great car, but. But so, yeah, like you were saying, like imagine yeah. the condition of the under underside. Uh, Lane, you've owned your own um, auction site before. Yeah. Is this a car that you think Doug Miro should have denied for being on the platform? Like Doug Miro wants to sell a McLaren for two, three or four hundred thousand dollars, and this could be the very next or the very preceding auction lot, a rusted through R32. I, I wouldn't take this. Car. Yeah, because I, I why, know JP. Why would, you, JP why, would you, why would you take this car? There's so yeah. many question marks. Like, and they're not a good question mark. These are like you can see what you can see is horrible. So why would you? Why do you want that as like someone picking it up, being like, oh, it's way worse than it was. It's just. Yeah, but it's guys, no I mean, as much as I agree okay. with you guys, it sold at yeah, a crazy made, high price you know. with tons of bids, with a lot of action. It'd be one thing if one or two people fought over it. This is as successful well, auction as you can get. Absolutely. That's, and then Doug DeMiro keeps doing this, JP. We see this time and time again. Where, you know, you and I, when we first started doing the show, we kept saying DeMiro needs a bounce to say no to some of these people. But, you know, they, he's selling cars. He's yeah, pushing, but do you think he's pushing of- tin. Yeah, so you think it brings down the site in general, like where you're like, oh, if they're selling that, then who knows? Yeah, like that. That has been JP's point since we started doing this show. Yeah, I don't know. Did that bridge behind it come with a car? Maybe, maybe they sold it under that premise, man. Because whoever spent twenty thousand dollars must have thought they were getting something uh, yeah. other than this piece of crap. What do you guys think? Uh, was this R thirty two worth the juice? Uh, is this something that uh, you know, even though it's doesn't look very good maybe it's still fun to drive and beat the heck out of and you don't have to worry about uh depreciating it i guess i don't know i feel like you could do a lot better with twenty thousand dollars there's other cars out there still uh in the enthusiast world um but uh let us know in the comments below and uh you know were you, did you outbid us did you outbid the third nerd lane skelton from dwa uh we'll be looking at the comments to see who did the best and then uh we'll be back tomorrow with something else that's the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive Woo! enthusiast auction Thanks. sites and see you guys get those words